So these are things that are going to be important moving forward. Which areas are connected to what? All right, let's talk a little bit about dentist, just dentistry in general. So interestingly enough, I would bet everybody that's on this call and listening in the future knows how to brush your teeth. You've been told by your mom what causes cavities. You brush your teeth, you care for your teeth, you try to avoid sugar, you know, all those things you know. Education is at, a, at an all-time high. Spending. Did you know there's $2 billion spent on just dental products every single year alone? Spending is up. Well, my arrows are out of whack here. It's supposed to show spending is up. What are cavities? They're up. Why? Well, when you go to a dental appointment, you have an exam, they look at your x-rays, they pick at your teeth a little bit, they say, oh, you have a cavity here, you need to come back for a filling, you need to come back for a crown. And then what do you do? You go home, you schedule, you come back, you get the filling of the crown, whatever they recommended, and then you do it all over again six months from now. They're not taking care of the source. They're only addressing the symptom. You know, did anyone in that conversation with you talk about why did you get a cavity? How can you prevent a cavity in the future? What's in that filling material that we're going to be using? What is in that crown? How could that affect you? Does it make a difference? Nobody's talking about those things. This is why education's up, spending is up, and cavities are up. Because nobody's talking about root cause. This picture is going to be really important as we continue through this, through the rest of the presentation. The way a tooth is made, the part that you see right here, this is enamel. And it's a very mineralized layer. It's a layer of crystals. This is why it's a little bit see-through. This is why it'll gleam in the sun. It's crystalline in structure. The enamel is full of minerals in those crystals. The mineral that's in the actual tooth structure itself is called hydroxyapatite. That's just the name of the mineral that makes up teeth, the tooth enamel. It also is in bones. So similar mineral, mineral structure. Once you move inside of the enamel, you get into what's called dentin. Now, dentin is a lot more collagenous. There's a lot more collagen in that area, a lot less minerals in that area, and it's filled with tubes. There's little tiny tubes that go from the inside layer of the tooth all the way to the outside because these are the nutrient channels. This is how the inside of the tooth that you'll see that third layer on the inside is the pulp where the nerve and the blood vessel and everything lives. Your body has nutrients that it's trying to feed to this tooth to keep it healthy, to try to resist cavities. So nutrients come up through that pulp layer on the inside of the tooth. They travel through the tubes in the dentin to get out to the enamel. There are literally a mile of tubes inside of every single tooth. So this dentin is just like a super highway. There's nutrients going back and forth all the time. That's the way the dentin works. And then, like I said, the pulp on the inside has the nerve and the blood vessel. All right, so in the 1930s, they had they had a meeting of the minds between researchers that were studying, actually it was more probably the 1940s, between researchers that have been studying this epidemic of tooth decay of cavities. And they all came and brought what they had through research found to influence tooth decay. <coughs> Excuse me. There were three theories that were presented. The first was called the acidogenic theory. What this theory said is that when we eat sugar, the bacteria in our mouth eat that sugar as well. They particularly like that food. Then they excrete acid and other toxins. That acid, if it sits on the tooth long enough, will dissolve the minerals in the tooth. Now, you've done these things probably before. You know, you've poured Coke on the battery terminals on your car battery. What does it do? It eats it away. Acid will eat away minerals. That's just a part. That's just the way an acid works. So if an, the acid from these bacteria sits on the tooth long enough, it will dissolve the minerals in the enamel and eventually you'll get a cavity. That was one of the theories that was presented. So this acid dissolves the minerals in the enamel. This creates a porous surface. Bacteria crawl into the holes that this acid has eaten in the enamel, and that creates a cavity. This is the acidogenic theory. There was another theory that was presented called the nutrition theory. So there is a doctor named Dr. Weston Price. Now, if you've done much research at all in the health world, you'll know that Dr. Weston Price is actually quite well known outside of dentistry for his research on nutrition. 
So Dr. Weston Price was a dentist, and he was the head of the research department for the American Dental Association. So he was a well-renowned dentist. He was disturbed by this increase in cavities, particularly in children at the time. So he and his wife decided that they wanted to go research indigenous societies. What that means are societies that had not be had not been touched by the modern medical or the modern diet the way that we eat today. So they wanted to go find these indigenous societies that were still eating the way that their ancestors had eaten. They wanted to look at what they were eating and then they wanted to look at their health. So the cool thing about Dr. Weston Price, two things. Number one was the timing that he did this. Today, if we tried to find an indigenous society that hadn't been touched by the modern diet, we couldn't find one. But he could back then. In the 30s, he could find indigenous societies. So he went and studied them. But the other thing that was amazing is that he had a camera. So he was able to photograph what he found. And what he found was that people who were eating their the food that their ancestors had eaten for centuries, they had better health. They had stronger bones. They had more longevity. They had wider smiles without decay and straight teeth. So he started investigating and saying, what are these people eating that's leading to these superior health outcomes? What he found is that the people were eating, and I think we're going to get to this actually in a minute. I'll tell you in a minute. I'll tell you in a minute what they're eating. But what he found is that it was possible to create cavity-resistant teeth, teeth that did not decay because they were strong enough to resist whatever acid happened to meet the tooth. This was really interesting. The idea is kind of, it builds a resistant or a roof over the tooth. So it doesn't matter what you put in the mouth or even honestly, how you care for your teeth. Kind of revolutionary. He presented this. The third theory that was presented was a hormone theory. And Dr. Melvin Page discovered that when hormones are out of balance, teeth start to decay. We see this in particularly in two demographics, teenage kids. How many of you as a teenager or have had teenagers that just had massive Massive, massive, massive cavities at the time and pregnant women. So when hormone changes started to happen, what happens is remember that dentin, those tubes in the dentin. Well, typically there's a fluid flow from the inside out. So it expels things that are on the outside of the tooth. The fluid flow flows outward, pushes everything off the tooth. And it's like an internal cleaning system. Well, when hormone changes, when hormones are out of balance, the system reverses and you actually get internal fluid flow. So literally the fluid brings the toxins and bacteria and acids into the tooth and accelerates the progression of tooth decay. This was really interesting. These three researchers came and presented these theories. What do you think, one, what do you what do you hear? If you eat sugar, you get cavities. If you don't brush your teeth, you get cavities. Do you ever hear about the nutrition piece? You can have cavity resistant teeth or hormones. Hey, your tooth isn't doing you any favors right now. It's actually creating more decay. No, we didn't hear about those because they were voted down. The only one that we heard about was acid equals cavities. Brush your teeth, don't eat sugar. So what do we do? Well, we're going to take this one step at a time. So let's first of all talk about how do we clean our teeth because it is important to clean teeth, particularly as we're reversing some of these nutritional and hormonal deficits. I talk about cleaning the outside once a day the right way. Do I care if you brush your teeth twice? No. Do I brush my teeth twice a day? Yes. Why? Because I just don't want to go to bed with that on my teeth. (laughs) So I do brush twice a day. But honestly, if you're brushing right, you only need to clean them once a day. We're going to talk through these different things. So from a cleaning standpoint, you are only going to use a soft toothbrush. Hard toothbrush is used for cleaning your toilet and cleaning the oil off your driveway. That's it. So the only two uses for a hard toothbrush, it will damage teeth. You're going to use a soft toothbrush and you're going to use it just like I'm showing on the screen. You angle those bristles so they go slightly up underneath the gum. You vibrate back and forth and then you sweep that down and away from the gum line. You move to the next area. You angle it slightly, vibrate, and you sweep it down. This is easy to do. You just go systematically through the mouth and you're going to clean everything away, only soft. Now, what do you put on that toothbrush? I highly recommend that we put a tooth powder with hydroxyapatite. Remember that word? That is the mineral that your teeth are made of. So if you have had acid on the teeth, if you have had a porous surface because of acid or because of a lot of sugar because you're not taking care of your mouth or because of some of these hormone changes. If your tooth is more porous, we want to fill those pores up with the thing that your tooth is made of. That's hydroxyapatite. I couldn't find a good product. 
So I actually formulated my own. Uh, it's a tooth powder that's hydroxyapatite. It's clay-based. It only has essential oils and um, xylitol. And people will question, why do I use xylitol as a sweetener? The reason I do is because xylitol cannot be consumed by bacteria in the mouth. So it is actually cavity. It creates cavity-resistant mouths. So we have xylitol, which will help prevent cavities, as well as hydroxyapatite that helps rebuild the teeth. If you look at your toothpaste tube, I want you to just read the ingredients. People say, well, I don't eat it. I'm going to tell you, you do. There's no way you cannot eat that because there's always going to be some that mixes with your saliva. The saliva is going to get swallowed while you're brushing your teeth. You are eating your toothpaste. Any of those chemicals listed on that tube, you are eating. Do you really want to eat them? Look at them and see. Do you really want to eat those things? My contention is no, because they're very dangerous. There's a lot of things in there that are actually going to kill off the bacteria in your gut, the healthy gut bacteria, because they're disinfectants. There's a lot of things you don't want. So you only want a tooth powder that has hydroxyapatite, excuse me, the thing that your teeth are made of, and gentle cleaners with very natural sweeteners or flavoring agents. That's all you want. Something very, very basic and simple. So check out that tooth powder. Hundreds of thousands of people are using this tooth powder and loving it now. They say it feels just like I left the dentist. My teeth are so clean, but they don't have all the side effects of the chemicals that they just put in their body. Tongue scraping. It's not optional. Why? The tongue looks like a shag carpet. Have you ever looked at your tongue? Oftentimes that's where fungus is harbored. So if you have an issue with candida, it's because you're not cleaning your tongue. A lot of times it's because there's some things harboring on that tongue. This is something that's been done in India through Ayurvedic practices for centuries. It also helps to balance the gut biome. It balances a lot of things. You should be tongue scraping once a day. So I recommend doing it at nighttime because a lot of times that's you're going to have a buildup there. I do it in the morning as well, but at least once a day, you need to be scraping your tongue. One of my favorites is by a company called Breath RX. But honestly, I have three different versions. I use them all. As long as you're able to get off what's on the tongue, you're going to be fine. Does a toothbrush do it alone? It does not. Do an experiment. Go brush your tongue. Then go tongue scrape. I think you're going to be shocked at how much is still on that tongue once you've cleaned it. All right, clean in between. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't even care if you floss. And I'm a dentist and I'm saying this. I don't care if you floss, but you have to clean in between some way. So you can use some sort of a water flosser, a floss holder, a floss pick, something to get in between there at least every few days. Now, one of my favorites is called a water flosser, a shower flosser. You can see it in the upper left corner here. It connects between the shower head and the wall. So it diverts just part of the water during your shower into this water flosser head, which means you're already wet. It's already messy in there. You don't have to pull something out on your counter. You're already showering. People love this. It works great. It also works great to clean the grout in your shower. Um, and it's just an easy, simple thing to add as a habit in your life. It just connects in the shower. You're in the shower. You spend an extra minute water flossing your teeth before you get out of the shower. Everybody likes an extra minute in the shower anyway. Give it a try. All right, let's go to diet now. So from a tooth cleaning standpoint, I don't spend much time there because honestly, you know how to do it. Remember, education's up. Every single one of you knows how to brush your teeth. You don't really need to know more. I've just talked about a few little, you know, picky things that I want you to focus on. But now let's get into the nitty gritty of this. First of all, how can you strengthen your teeth by what you ate? This is Dr. Weston Price again. So this is a picture that he took when he was visiting those indigenous societies. If you can see these two brothers, these are brothers, they were raised, so they have the same genetics, but the brother on the right that's missing teeth already, he had started to eat a modern diet, a lot more sugar, a lot more um, processed dairy products, packaged foods, those kinds of things, whereas the brother on the left, who's a little older, had stuck with their indigenous ancestral diet. You can see the change in just these boys alone. This is rapid. This is a rapid change when we when we have diet modifications, and we're seeing it today. One of the things that I always point out is the number of people who have crooked teeth. You know, braces are something that's almost like a rite of passage. Why? It doesn't have to be a rite of passage. It's because our mouths aren't big enough for all the teeth that should be in them anymore. Why? Because of nutrition. The first bone that's affected by malnutrition is actually the upper jaw. If the upper jaw forms too narrow, the lower jaw forms too narrow, and the teeth are crooked. We then go into all sorts of things that we're going to talk about at the end, which involves growth and development and sleep issues and airway problems and all sorts of things. This all starts with nutrition. What Dr. Weston Price found is that those that had better nutrition 
What did it mean? What did that mean? Those that had better health were eating four times the amount of water-soluble vitamins. That's vitamin C, that's vitamin B. And they were eating, and calcium and other minerals, four times those. They were eating 10 times the amount of fat-soluble vitamins. What are those vitamins? Those are vitamins A, D, E, and K. These are the vitamins that I like to think of them. They're the gatekeepers. They're the ones that open the doors to our cells and escort all the minerals in, particularly vitamin D and vitamin K. Without those vitamins, the minerals, even if you're supplementing with minerals, you're very conscious of it, they can't get into your cells. This is interestingly enough why we use an oil-based salad dressing on a salad. Because if you don't have the fats, you aren't actually getting the nutrients out of that salad into your cells. Isn't that interesting? So you should always be using some sort of an oil on a salad. Otherwise, the, the vitamins and the minerals in that salad itself are not getting into your cells. These are fat-soluble vitamins. These are things that escort those minerals in. And he found that this was the difference in those that were healthy and those that were not, as they were eating 10 times the amount of these. So where do you get them? Vitamin A. Vitamin A comes from animal sources, such as egg, meat, dairy products. However, we always have to have a little bit of a disclaimer on that. That's not pasteurized dairy. That's not factory farmed meat and eggs. Those are things that are grown and raised the correct way so that the actual fats are the good kind of fat you want, and they don't have all the chemicals and other byproducts and hormones along with them. So it's tricky in our world. You know, I've heard it said that we are the most malnutrition, mal, overweight, malnourished society we've ever had on the face of the planet. Think about that. Overweight, malnourished. How could those two things go together? Because we're eating food, but it's not nourishing us. So we do have to be careful about sourcing for these things. Beta carotene and vita, a precursor of vitamin A also comes from green leafy vegetables and intensely covered, colored fruits and vegetables. So carrots, peppers, colored peppers, those kinds of things. That's where we get vitamin A from, vitamin D. Vitamin D, the body itself makes vitamin D when it's exposed to the sun. So people say, I'm out in the sun a lot. I really don't need to supplement this. Well, research has shown that you need to be in the sun at about 1 p.m. for an hour a day naked in order to get enough vitamin D because we just don't get it the rest of our lives these days. So if you're laying, if you're out in the sun that much, if you're not wearing, look, oh, excuse me, if you're not wearing long sleeves, if you're not wearing a hat, you know, if you're actually exposed, then you're probably getting enough. If you're not, you're not. You need to be supplementing. You can get it from cheese, butter, not margarine. That should be off there. Fortified milk. That's bad too. Uh, I basically want unpasteurized raw milk. Um, there are few sources that actually can get you vitamin D some fatty fishes, some um, butter, but they're really, vitamin D, I believe, is one that needs to be supplemented. Vitamin E, this is often found in the seeds of things, corn, nut, olives, green, leafy vegetables, vegetable oils, and wheat germ. However, there are a lot of problems with vegetable oils. So I like to get them from the actual nut or seed itself, not from the oil from the nut or seed. Vitamin K, this is a little bit of a tricky one because there are two vitamin Ks. There is vitamin K1 that is found mostly in greens like cabbage, spinach, other green leafy vegetables. There is vitamin K2. Dr. Weston Price actually in his research called this activator X. They have since named it vitamin K2. He determined that it was the missing factor. It was the thing that led to healthy people. Vitamin K2 can be found only typically in animal products from grass-fed animals. So he was finding this in populations that were eating a lot of grass-fed dairy in the Swiss Alps, those kinds of things. So we have to look for it in butter from grass-fed animals and milk products from grass-fed animals. Again, the sourcing is so important. I supplement vitamin D and vitamin K2, vitamin D3, vitamin K2 every day because it's just a challenge to get in our world today. And that this is one of the supplements that I recommend. I don't recommend a lot of supplements. This is one that I do every single day. <music>